Now, international monitors insist that radiation levels at Ukraine's largest nuclear power plant remain stable after it was seized by Russian forces. The UN Security Council has held an emergency meeting in response to the attack. And our North America correspondent, Jade McMillan, joins us now from Washington. Jade, what have we heard in the meeting? What's come out? out of it. Well, Ukraine has used this meeting to accuse Russia of nuclear terrorism. It says that Russian forces attacked the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant in the country's southeast overnight, that it led to a large fire at the facility that has since been extinguished. Now, as you said, international monitors insist that the plant operating normally, that safety systems are intact and uh, there has not been any impact on radiation levels, that they remain stable. But this has caused international alarm. This is Europe's largest nuclear power plant. There are grave fears for the consequences, not only for Ukraine, but for Europe more broadly, uh, if safety at this facility or indeed any other facility in Ukraine is compromised. Uh, the UN Security Council held this urgent meeting in New York to discuss the situation. The Russian representative to the UN blamed the fire on what he described as Ukrainian saboteurs. That is something that the Ukrainian ambassador immediately dismissed as lies. We've also heard a condemnation of Russia's actions from a number of other countries, including the United States. By the grace of God, the world narrowly averted a nuclear catastrophe last night. We all waited to exhale as we watched the horrific situation unfold in real time. I applaud the ability of the Ukrainian operators to keep all six reactors in safe conditions while under attack and to report as they were able to their, to their nuclear regulator. Now, Jade, apart from the UN Security Council gathering, NATO foreign meters, ministers have also been meeting. What have they been discussing? Well, this meeting in Brussels comes as NATO continues to build up its defences. Thousands of troops have been sent to its eastern flank. NATO is deploying elements of its response force for the first time and uh, vowing that it will defend every inch of NATO territory in the event that there is any sort of spillover from the conflict in Ukraine. What NATO will not be doing, though, is helping to enforce a no-fly zone over Ukraine. This is something Thing that uh, the Ukrainian government has asked Western nations for support with to prevent Russian aircraft from entering its airspace. But NATO's Secretary General says that uh, that would bring the alliance into direct conflict with Russia, something that it's not prepared to do. We have made it clear that we are not going to move into Ukraine, neither on the ground or in the Ukrainian airspace. And of course, the only way to implement a no-fly zone is to send NATO planes, fighter planes, into Ukrainian air airspace and then impose that no-fly zone by shooting down Russian planes. And our assessment is that uh, we understand the uh, desperation, but we also believe that if we did that, we end up with something that could end in a full-fledged war in Europe involving many more countries and uh, causing much more human suffering. Now, the US Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, has reinforced that message today. He says that uh, the US and its allies do not want uh, to uh, provoke a, a broader conflict here. He says the US, though, is still considering uh, further sanctions against Russia. Right, Jade McMillan, they're reporting for us from Washington. Thank you.